All right, everybody, welcome to the test run. Welcome to the test run, the dry run here for uh, for live from the cheap seats. We're uh, we're gonna give it a shot here, and uh, we're gonna see if I can get all the bells and whistles working, all the wing dings, all the cables, all of everything that uh, that needs to be running, running. Um, all of the thingamajigs doing whatever thingamajigs do, all the knobs twisted and turned like they're supposed to be. We're gonna find out. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge. You should see the uh, the the technical circus in front of me that uh, that we're gonna work with here. But uh, should be a lot of fun. Now, uh, what I am what this is is the cheap seats, and let me tell you a little bit about it. The cheap seats is a fun little show it's it got started many years ago i was a uh i was a photographer on the sidelines for pro football weekly and uh, i was on the side of the of a buccaneers game and i wanted to be on the sideline of a game so bad because i've been a fan since year one and when i finally had the opportunity to get on the sidelines and i'd been there for i'd, I'd Photograph games for a little more than a year, and I was standing on the sidelines at a preseason game, dripping with sweat. I was hot. I was miserable. It was terrible. I didn't even know what the score of the game was. I had no idea what the score of the game was. Uh, I looked. Uh, I, I looked down at my camera strap. I, I was wringing it out, with, wringing all the sweat out, and I was just miserable. And I said, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be in the cheap seats. That's where I had the most fun, not in the locker room. Not on the sidelines, not up in the press box, not uh, not in the luxury suites. But I had the best time when I was up in the cheap seats, just talking football. And that's what this is all about. And I want you to be a part of the conversation. So let's have a good time. Uh, let's enjoy ourselves. And uh, welcome to the dry run, the the test run for the cheap seats. Uh, this is, this is going to be a good time. Now, here's how it's going to work during the conversations. Let's say you give me a call and, uh, during that call, I think <laughs> maybe it's, it, it, you have a moment, whatever you say something that, that, uh, that I think deserves it and it won't happen often, but if you deserve it, you're going to hear this. Walk the plank. Walk the plank. If you have to walk the plank. I'm disconnecting you. Go sit in a corner. Think about what you did. Sit there for 15 minutes, and uh, and you will end up. I, I want you to call back. It doesn't mean you're not a part of this show. It doesn't mean I want I, that. I don't want you to be here. It just means take a breather. Take a minute. And uh, let's say you say something. You make a really great point. You say something that I hadn't thought of, or or you 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 just you get me excited. You're gonna hear this. Now, if you've been a Bucks fan for long, you know that sound. That's going to mean something to you. If you don't know what that sound is, hang out. I promise you, you will hear that. You will, you will hear that. You'll learn what that sound is, but it's near and dear to my heart and anybody who's been a Bucks fan for a very long time. So that's what this is all about. The phone number to call is 678-825-825. 5263 and if everything is hooked up correctly if all the uh, wires are correct everything is where it belongs we'll be able to talk and I'm looking forward to hearing from you so somebody give me a shout and let's uh, let's test that out and see how it's going I don't know if you're watching the game tonight I have a monitor here I can see the game uh Clyde Edwards Solaire seems like the real deal um <laughs> Patrick Mahomes before the half. What was that? A 16 play, nine minute, 91 yard drive or something like that. It was an, it, it was incredible. Uh, we can talk about that game, and we can certainly talk about the Bucks game that is coming up this week, uh, this this Sunday at uh, four o'clock, four twenty five. I'm so excited to talk about that. It's time. It's time. How many of you sat here and said that there were going to be no games? How many of you how, how how many calls into Peter's show 
said, oh, no, there's going to be no game. So hold on. We got a call. Let's take this call. Hey, how you doing? This is Rick. Who am I speaking with? Hey, this is Matt in Oklahoma. Matt in Oklahoma. I, I, Matt, I was hoping you were going to call. How you doing? I'm watching this guy at 25. I don't know if you heard from LSU. Yeah, Clyde Edwards Solaire. Yeah. That guy got something going on. He just scored. I don't know if he's going Yeah, I'm, I'm watching the game right now. I can see the game. I can make. Uh, I, I can talk to you about the game. And that's part of what this show is going to be about also on Sunday nights. This show is going to be Sunday nights at 9 o'clock in general. This week it's going to start a little bit after. Uh, a little bit later, most likely it's after the the Peter and uh, the crew have their incredible uh, their their post game show down at uh, at the deck at Isla. So um, I want you guys to uh, to enjoy that, but then hang around and talk to me about the game that's going on Sunday night. So um, what do you think about Kansas City? Are they are they everything they're cracked up to be? I think they're better than they were last year. I kind of mentioned it when I sent you the message with the messenger thing. Yeah. If they become a running team, oh, hell, nobody's going to stop them. They yeah. They got too much speed on the wing, and if you start playing them, then now they got a running back and a, and a line doing very well in open hole. That's just impossible. Well, if they are, you have to understand, uh, we're not sure if the Texans are the same team they were last year. So we may be comparing... Right. Right. I'm not sure what they were thinking with that. The defense is is about the same. So that side of the ball is equal. I don't I don't think their offense is gonna be strong, but their defense as long as JJ Watt can stay on the field probably for less than a month. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> And all that. So, well, I mean, it, it, it's this is week one. I've, I've, I've been saying this for a while now. Week one is going to be very different. Don't, uh, don't get too caught up in the hype. Don't get too, um, you know, don't, don't get too excited and think, oh no, I mean, this is everything. This is, this is week one. So, I'm not really sure what's going to happen in the long run. They're, they're catching passes. They're doing their thing. Kelsey's out there catching when he has to. And it looks like they're always a third and less than two. So they're not suffering from a short off season. I don't know about Houston, but Kansas City just looks tough to me. Right. Uh, let me, like let me hold on. Let me interrupt you. Joshua, Cole, Allen, you're out there. You're saying you cannot hear the caller. Has that been corrected? Can you hear the caller yet? Uh, well, I'm not sure if he can hear the caller or not. <laughs> um, I always come up very low on uh, Peter's thing too. It's yeah, no, I'm not sure. I've I've got it turned up. I'm uh, I'm waiting to see if Joshua replies and says whether or not he can hear the caller. Can anybody out there? Can you post in the comments whether you can hear the caller or not? And that's why we're doing this tonight. Promoting the LA Rams stadium. That thing looks awesome. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Man. Okay, you can hear okay. So uh it was just Joshua, I guess, who couldn't hear the caller. I'm not sure what was going on there. Okay. Uh, oh, it's it's fixed now. All right. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you guys. Uh all right. Um uh, <laughs> and that's why we were run doing this little uh experiment here. Um that's why I called. That was the first call up. Peter Blake show when he went live. So Were you really? Live. You've got it. This is a tradition now, isn't it? It's gotten to be something I have to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome, and I like uh, interacting with you when you uh, when you text me during the day. So I appreciate that. I, I enjoy it, and and we're here now, and I'm in the middle of a. I'm watching a game that's 200 miles away from me. I should be able to drive up there and party with these people. It's right? real football. It's yeah, it real is. football. How many how many times have we been hearing that there's been oh the season's not going to happen we're all going to die everything's going terribly 
It's not going to happen. They're going to push the season back. It's going to be delayed. There's no way they're going to have a they're they're going to have a game. I believe that. I thought they were going to do an eight game season. Yeah. Just well, like, we are here and we got it going. All right, and, Matt. And it looks like. Yeah, go ahead. I got a caller. I've got somebody here that I want to I want to test out. I've got someone here okay. to uh, pull out of the lobby. So thank you for calling. All right, man. You have a good night. Yeah, you got it. All right, first caller. Now, dude. How we doing, buddy? Good. How do we sound? You sound good. The uh, I think the it's the same similar situation on uh, Peter's show where the the phone call integration the, the line volume's a little low. Still uh, low. Well, it, yeah, it's lower than yours. It's just, they, they just don't match up. But that's you know we've been struggling with that for Pete on Peter's show for a while too. So uh, again, everybody watching, we're just uh, we're we're giving Rick a dry run, which <laughs> is not like the other dry stuff you give a guy, but, uh, Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Play a sound effect for that. Uh, <laughs> the sound effects are a, a, a tad bit low too. Uh, I don't know if that's because of a, of a mixer situation or lack of a yeah, mixer. I'm going to have to, uh, no, I've got a mixer. I'm going to have to, to work on that. Here's the sound effect for the, uh, for, for your dry run. <laughs> Exactly, except for being the dude and being uh, uh, over the age of 50. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's appropriate. For me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, everybody out there, appreciate you tuning in. Like I said, uh, this don't expect this to be what you get when you see live from the cheap seats. We're no, doing no, no. We're, we're, we're basically trying to break his tech to max it out, to see what we can get out of it, to see what we can't get out of it. That's exactly uh, right. And and to be honest with you, uh, so far so good. Uh, I I got I got to throw a little shout out there uh, to three twenty solar. I've got to send a shout out to uh, again mycannabiscard.com, dot uh, com, Fast Track Cannabis Solutions of America, which is the same company. They're just kind of like a partnership. And last but not least, the Deck Barn Grill at Isla del Sol. In the beautiful area of St. Petersburg, Florida, right there on the water. Watch parties, every Bucks game. Come down, special guests, prize giveaways, food, drink specials. All your favorite Bucks report people, either live or via remote. Now, Rick, uh, let's let me get somebody else on here because you know the dude is just a yep. guy drinking drinking a cocktail and, and having a smoke. Uh, but what I want you to try to do, the one thing I want you to pull off sometime during the show is yeah. having somebody like this on screen and a phone caller just to see what happens. Uh, but honestly, so far, so good. You're not glitching. You're not freezing. Uh, right. you're, the camera shot is, is, is as beautiful as you being in it will allow it. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, that, that's pretty scary. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, if you were covered in honey, you'd have more viewers right now. Uh, and that's an inside joke, bazinga. But great job, man. I appreciate the, uh, the, the you know, the effort getting out here. And let's go yeah. ahead and burn this to the ground and see what we can make happen before we yeah, get Yeah, that's game. what I want to do. I want to make sure we are good to go for Sunday. And uh, we will <laughs> go forward from there. Hey, is that is that a live shot of Raymond James Stadium behind you? No. <laughs> No, no, but welcome to the cheap seat. There you go, brother. All right. Uh, hey, anybody? Oh, that's my dog barking at an armadillo. Nice. Uh, appreciate you, man. Let's get on here and max this out. Uh, I'll start funneling people your way, sir. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. All right. So uh, now I want phone calls. I want phone calls, guys. Six, seven, eight. 8255263678825 let's uh let's get a call in here so i can uh we we can get somebody on video and have a phone call bvev i know you're out there uh let's talk football come on now we've been waiting how how many days have we been waiting for this we've got toe meets leather i'm watching real football and you guys are quiet is it cuz you're watching football what what what's the deal come on uh, now tell me about like news from today from the, from the Buccaneers. Now, three of the four, 
uh, are no longer on IR, but Mike Evans is still questionable uh, for the game coming up this Sunday. How big of a deal is that to you? How much of a problem is that going to be? Is that going to impact the game? Do you believe it's going to impact the game? Do you believe it's going to have much of an effect on the on what's going to happen this Sunday? Uh, I'm I'm by the way, they are having a fantastic uh, watch party at the deck bar and grill at Isla. Uh, out at Isla del Sol, and I want you guys to be there. I wish I could be there. You have no idea how bad I want to be there to watch the game with these guys. Peter's going to be there. Joshua Cole Allen's going to be there. Ray's going to be there. Uh, Ray Kennedy, and just uh, I, I'm not sure if Blake. I believe Blake Anthony's going to be there. Hold on, we got another call coming in here. Hey, who am I speaking with? Hello, Rick. Yes, Ben Cornett. Ben Cornett. Hey, talk to me, brother. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Rick? Doing great. Thank you for calling. No problem, man. Uh, just I'm just turning on the football game too, but I'm watching the hockey game as well. I'm from Las Vegas, so Golden yeah. Knights are playing right now. Yes, they are. What's the score in that game? Two to one, Dallas in the third period. About eight minutes to go. Uh oh. So, kind of getting nervous here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one to one, so I mean, it's still not. I mean. This is, you tied right. it up, you know, you guys tied it up. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm, you know, you're talking about the uh, injury report. Uh, Evan's still yeah. not practicing. I, I don't know. He says he's going to give it a go, Rick. You believe him? I mean, if he says he's going to give it a go, he, 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 hopefully he knows his body. Um, I imagine that the coaching staff and everybody, they're being very, very careful with him. Uh, they probably right. are also, there's game, there's a lot of gamesmanship that happens, um, right, yeah. you know, saying, Oh, I don't know if he can make it out. He's injured. I don't know. I'm not real sure what we can do. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, is that it, it, he's had hamstring problems. I mean, you've got to, you have to think about the fact that, I mean, he has had a whole lot of hamstring problems in his career. Right. So I don't yeah, know. Was it you that was talking about the first time you think that happened? That uh, was in Pittsburgh several years ago, 2014 uh, or 15 or something like that. No, it wasn't me. Yeah, it was somebody I, I was I, I was chatting with. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah somebody, somebody, somebody had talked about that. Yeah, I mean he's a he, he's a tall guy, you know, and he doesn't he's not the quickest guy, but when he's tall and what is he like six three, six four, I think. Yeah, he's a pretty tall receiver, and he's carrying that you know weight and stuff too. So you know that that could have an effect on it. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I just it's not good, you know. Especially you know he's in, this is his seventh year now, so yeah, that's uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I mean it, it's and my uh, my question is how does this play? This is kind of an interesting question. How does this play into the Chris Godwin? thing for for next season chris godwin's gonna you know he's up it's a contract here is he gonna sign is he not gonna sign what's gonna happen are they gonna have to move on what what's gonna happen with the salary cap how is this all gonna work out well if mike evans has a chronic hamstring problem that i mean does that play into it i think it, it could yeah you know <laughs> but at the same time the salary cap you know without you know yeah. the fans this well most of the teams won't have fans, you know, it's going to affect the salary cap, yeah. you know, and, and there's other interest too, you know, yeah. um, another position that, you know, they're going to look at like Shaq Barrett, Shaq Barrett, Levante, you know, David, I mean, Levante, David. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. You And Godwin, I got to see one more year out of him. Yeah. I know he had a great year last year, but you know, you don't want it to be a situation where, you know, was it, just because, you know, he had that one great year or can he, you know, do this multiple years, you know, that that's yeah. the key. You don't want to throw out that money, but at the same time, look, I mean, Mike Evans, he's NFL wise, he's a veteran. And if, like you're saying with the hamstring problems, you know, it's something to, you know, think about in the back of your mind if you're Jason Light and yeah. Bruce Arians. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's it's a good problem to have. You know, what did Peter say? It's a good problem to have yeah. all these receivers, you know, for now. 
uh, the goals, you know, they're all in. So focus this year and yeah. then whatever happens, happens. Yeah, well, and and you know they're going to be injuries no matter what. There's no team that that goes through the year without without injuries. There's no team that goes through a year without little, uh, you know, without nagging things happening, without little problems here and there. Um, right. It, so you you can expect that is going to happen. Uh, right. You just don't want your main guy to be injured. You want him to be healthy. Who's the main That's guy? The guy? That's a great center. question. Who's the main guy? I think it's Brady. You know, look, the defense is going to be – defense wins championships. Right. But you still need a quarterback in this league, especially with the defensive rules being changed over the last decade. And you got to have the offensive line. You know, I still worry a little bit about the offensive line. I know it was ranked high, but, you know, Jameis did get <laughs> pounded several times. Well, he held the no, ball no, forever, part too. Of his fault, part yeah. Of his fault. Yeah. You know, but what I'm saying is, you know, the offensive line's got to play better, especially when you got a 43 year old. I right. know he's great, but he's 43. Well, you know, he's not. He doesn't have James's right mobility. This, so yeah, this really is why cool. I said for me, it's almost going to be like porn when Brady throws a ball away. Right. You know, yeah. because we, it, I mean, it just didn't happen last year. It just right. didn't and, happen. You know, it, and Rick, I just saw that Watson's getting the ball out faster too. Yeah. Tonight, so yeah. far he's throwing the the ball getting out of his hands quicker. So, you know, that's another thing about you know you're right about Jameis not getting the ball out faster. Yeah. Watson had the same problem, but so far tonight, from what I've seen, yeah, it looks like he's improved that part of his game in this game at least. Yeah. Um. But boy, uh, if. Both times, I mean, I think Houston beat them last year in the first game, and then uh, in the second game, it was uh, if I'm, I'm, it was the playoff game where Houston took a big lead. I, I forgot what it was, twenty eight, I think, twenty eight points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They blew that lead in the in the divisional round. Yeah. Hey Ben, right. hold on here. Let me bring Ray in here. Okay, let me bring Tampa Ray Ray into the. Yeah, talk. go ahead. Hey Ray. <laughs> hey Rick. How this you doing, brother? Playoffs. <laughs> Playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> Nate, how you doing, Ben? Is that Ben on the phone with you? Yep, it's Ben. How are you, Ben? Good, Ray. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. I'm waiting ready for some Buccaneer football on Sunday. Oh, oh man, wait. wait a few more days, man. Can yeah. I wait? I feel good here in front of this. I feel good. It, it looks feels good. good. It looks I really feel good. Like I'm, yeah. I've, I think I'm in the cheap seats. It feels good. No, I I wanted to say I don't know what you did with your with the phone call, but man, I can hear Ben fantastic. I can hear you fantastic. Okay, right now. I'm talking a little low because fam, got the little right. ones sleeping over here, but I still wanted to get in here and say hey to you guys and just right. hope everyone's going to join us for the your cheap seats, the cheap seats from the cheap seats after the uh, Bucks game on Sunday after our yep. game party and and our pre pregame party. I'm sure you're going to be on there with us too. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna hop on for that. It's a it's a full day of football. Full day. And, uh, yeah. and, and it happened. Way, Both you guys, it happened. Do you, do you realize what's on TV right now? I'm holding my breath. <laughs> you don't have to anymore. I know. You don't have to anymore. Football's happening. It's I mean, this isn't think, like, gosh, I hope we have football. It's there. Well, Rick, we knew, I think we knew that it was going to happen. Now the challenge is going to be the testing every week. You know, if there's one person that could affect a team, you know, that's what we're yeah. waiting on now. That's the thing about, we didn't have preseason games. So we really, the, but they've been, they've been testing good. and you had a lot more people to test. Yeah, that, that too. So, so, I mean, the travel. Yeah. And the traveling. So it's, it's going to be, you know, like I said, we'll hold our breath, you know, yeah. um, Hopefully it goes smooth. Yeah. And, you know, there could be a game this Sunday, guys, that's um, playing opposite us. They might not have a game because of the fires in Northern California, the, the uh, air quality, uh, the Niner game. They're talking about not having the game? It's bad well, air quality. Just for checking it out. Yeah, because if it's over 200, they can't play in that kind of uh, weather. So right now it's at like 70. So it's pretty good, but there's been they've been monitoring that all week from what I've read on the uh, internet. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! How's how would that get handled? <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, 
Double header. <laughs> well, you guys know it actually would be, if, and and we don't want to see it because it's gonna. It's still four days away, and they're hoping some of those fires can go out. And of course, it depends on which way the wind's blowing. Or like you, Rick always points out, it's a it's an oblong shaped football, and it bounces yeah. funny. But you know, it would actually. I'm not looking forward to. It. I hope they can. I hope the fires go out first of all because it's a terrible thing that's going on there in California. Yeah. But um, if they did have to postpone that game, I don't know when they're gonna do it. But it might be a. It, can, at least it might be an example of how, because do we not, would we, 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 wouldn't we be remiss to say that there's not the possibility this season that there could be a flare up with a team? Hopefully not, but at some point that they're going to have to address it this way. So there's going to need, they're going to need to possibly have some flexibility in that NFL schedule this year. This is why you have a 16 man yeah. uh, practice squad, though. I mean, you should be able, and you can pull people up until the last, uh, I mean, I think, what, 90 minutes before a game? You yeah. can pull people off your practice yeah. squad. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Well, we know who are they? Who is San Francisco playing? Arizona. Okay, so it's a division game. They may have the same bye week. Maybe could. Um, I don't know. I have to look at the schedule. But right. Yeah, or well, they can move it to another location. I mean, on a Monday, you know, yeah. it's always possible. I yeah. mean, the, but I, I think they'll get it going because the air quality is getting pretty much down. Yeah. Lately, so it, it should be good to go. Yeah. But. Like I said, it's just something to monitor. Can somebody check? Uh, somebody out there check and put it in the comments whether uh, when the bye week is for uh, those two teams. Um, hey. And Ben makes a great point there because, you know, it's like the hockey at the two neutral sites in Canada. Um, and there's no loss of revenue as far as like we see with the, and I wanted to ask you, Rick and Ben, you too, we see the limited, the sparse amount of fans there at uh, Arrowhead stadium, but you know, they're also mm -hmm. piping, they're piping in some cheering noise and stuff. And right. it's going to be a little weird when they're piping in that cheering noise and you can't at least let your, 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 brain can't think that maybe it's just the 5,000 people that are there that are making all that noise, but I'm not sure what the difference will be there when, the, you know, Sunday from the Big Easy when the Bucks are, you know, playing there yeah. against the Saints. I, I'd, well, I'd love for things to be different. It's going to be in a dome. Yeah. It's going to be in a dome, so the, it's going to be a little louder because you're indoors. Well, I don't know that it matters so. if, I mean, decibels are decibels, aren't they? I mean, they're... It, it'll echo. It'll play it's so loud. Speakers oh. inside, it'll it'll make it louder because you're in enclosed environment where outdoors, you know, it can be. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the two loudest stadiums loud. are outdoor stadiums. Right. Yeah. So boy, and, and, I, don't and I don't know if you've been to the uh, Mercedes uh, Benz dome or stadium, whatever it's called in Atlanta. No, that thing you can fit two and a half Georgia domes inside that stadium. <sighs> Wow. I mean, when wow. they built, when they built the, this new stadium, my, my buddy Joey, who is a big Falcons fan, he said it looks like the shed out back. The Georgia Dome looked like the shed out back of the new stadium. <laughs> I mean, it was it was hilarious. And this was the big <laughs> new stadium at one point. It wasn't that long ago. But this thing is, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's it's – it, it's amazing. Now I wonder if you could fit that the Mercedes Benz Dome inside that new SoFi Stadium there, where the Chargers and Rams will be playing. Because five billion dollars yeah. for a new stadium—I just can't imagine. Well, I mean, if one well, team's you know, pitching in two two billion, the other team's pitching in two billion. <laughs> Community pitching in one. I'm, I'm bummed out because I'm in Las Vegas. Bucks were coming to Vegas this year. And oh man. oh man. man, yeah, that's that's at the new Allegiant Stadium. <laughs> I was planning on flying nice. out there for that game. Yeah. Oh Oof. man, talk about bad luck, man. The one year. That <laughs> yeah, it'll come again. It'll happen again. Like I still want to go to Green Bay. I haven't been to Green Bay, and I'm like, I really want to go to Lambeau. Yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a good one. Green Bay. Um, I don't know, man. I I want to. See that new LA stadium though. It looks it's insane. pretty damn good. Yeah, it looks insane. It really just looks insane. I mean, it looks like yeah. like really? Are you kidding me? I mean, it's just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but how much more? I mean, yeah. five billion on a stadium. What what I, I can't imagine because I know that the Falcons stadium cost two point two. I can't imagine what you could possibly do. 
Well, Rick, you said you've yeah. been in the Falcon Stadium. Yeah. What is that? The whole the television and the you know the, the okay the, the ring. Board. The ring. Yeah. yeah. Does that really it's lower? It's lower than you think it is. So, so that you're not you're not looking up. It's okay. not terrible. It's not it's not awful. And there's screens everywhere you look. They're they're big screens. I mean, wow. it's, a, it's a pretty amazing experience. You know what's funny? Here's a here's a here's a funny comment to bring up about this. This is the thing that blew my mind more than anything. Atlanta being the home to Coca-Cola, right? Right. You know those uh those I forgot oh. what they're called, the machines you go when you go to like McDonald's or whatever and you get to choose whichever flavor you want or whatever you want and you go and you pop your drink in there and you refill it and you whatever you want, you fill it right. up yourself. They have those set up all over the stadium. You buy for $2, you buy a drink. And then you use that cup for the rest of the day and you just refill for free. Well, you know, but yeah, it, it, the thing is, talking about that indoor stadium, I'm I'm torn because you know Raymond James Stadium is what 22 years old now, yeah. finished in 1998. Yeah. They're starting to talk. I mean, they're doing all these improvements. They're going to get that grant because they're having a Super Bowl 55 here. But they're already starting to be those years away whispers right. of you know needing a new stadium, and people all automatically are like, it's got to be an indoor stadium. And I've been just since I was literally knee high to a grasshopper yeah. in seven, 76, going to that outdoor first. Yeah. The big sombrero, and now it's Raymond James, and I know it's hotter than dogs rear in the you know September, and like last year, the first game there against the Niners was just right. blistering hot. But I I get it that indoor is it's come more comfortable. We have the Rays playing here at Tropicana, yeah. Field, but I'm old school. I like to be out in the weather, even if it's never going to snow. Well, don't say never say never. I don't know. I don't know. August, September games, uh, right after, uh, right after a rainstorm. Uh, I don't know. If you're winning, I, if you're, uh, if, I, yeah. you remember, remember the I old, like remember the Tampa Stadium with the metal seats, and you sat down. I swear, you could almost smell bacon. Oh, it was, <laughs> it, it was so hot. The metal it, seats on your thighs. <laughs> I remember one time my dad actually popped the eight bucks to get the orange clip on, you know, because uh -huh. yep. of course big spenders got the clip on seats. And, um, or what we kids used to do is, you know, that as the game was ending, usually in a blowout and the bucks were losing, except for in 79. Um, mm -hmm. or, but, you know, the people would leave early and we'd kind of scatter around and go grab our orange seat and we'd get a quarter in the orange, you know, comfy seats. And that, that was the day we were broming that day. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Remember the little, the little square cushions that you could bring in with <laughs> down on there that would like that that around the edge where the seam was it was always sharp <laughs> oh my dad used to hide his bottle in there I'm yeah i'd say bottle of what but <laughs> anyway fellas hey ben good talking to you and rick good talking to you i gotta take care of this little one here so thanks for hopping on brother have a great yeah, evening I'm looking forward to sunday you, Ray. Take yeah, care, okay, absolutely you and too, everybody man. catch ray Peter, Joshua, who else is going to be there? Do you know? I, I think Blake's supposed to come or Phil Schwagler, Phil, uh, you know, Schwags. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, anybody else in the area, come on out there and we'll stay socially distanced. But we're going to have a microphone available that I'll be sterilized and cleaning for you. But I'd like to get you if you have any comments. And hopefully we're talking about, uh, you know, really good game there Sunday. Just, it, you know, the game of the week there. And it's going to yeah. be fantastic. Brady versus Breeze. Let's just mm -hmm. look. I'm ready for this. That's going to be awesome. And that's at the, the deck bar and grill at Isla del Sol. And I am so jealous that I'm not getting the wings and the burgers. Brother. Me. Oh, wait till you try those Rick. When you get down what here, I hear. that's what and, I hear. And I will have a, <laughs> I will have a, a cup of Ray on Sunday morning. So um, basically I'm going to talk a little bit of Buccaneer history. I'm not going to go into what I'm going. I always, you know, I've been developing it in my head for a, a week now and trying to. So it's basically you get up Sunday morning and if you're like me, you know, back going back for most of my life, you know, I pace from nine to one o'clock because the Bucks always played at one o'clock, but now it's a 430, 425 game. But I'm going to basically just talk a little bit about Buccaneers history and uh, take some comments. So join me 9 a.m. on Sunday for Cup of Ray and then we'll be there after we'll be at the deck bar and grill for the pregame show for your uh, Bucks Saints game day. Awesome. And the postgame show too. You guys are going to hang out and do the whole thing, right? And then we're probably going to hang out and watch you brother. Cause we're going to, cause awesome. we're family here. So, <laughs> all awesome. right, guys, we'll see you guys later. All right. You have Take a great care, night. Rick. You guys too. Uh, see you later, Rick. I'm going to watch it's going to overtime. So, okay. Oh, oh, very good. Right, very good. <laughs> all right. Best of luck to <laughs> you. All right, man. Thank all you. Right. Yep. All right, guys, you are watching the uh, the the test, the technical test run here for live from the cheap seat powered up 
by 320 solar. Uh, you can finally say goodbye to your electric bill and go solar for zero out of pocket with 320 solar. The current promotion is uh, signed for zero out of pocket solar at 320solar.com. Have no payments until 2022. I wish everything was like that. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. So, uh, um, if you're watching, the, oh, we got another call. Oh, it is. Look who it is. Look who it is. Joshua Cole Allen. How you doing, brother? Oh my God, is it the cheap seats with Rick Hugh Honey Hughes? <laughs> How you doing, brother? What's going on, man. I just had a uh, had a quick comment. I heard you guys were talking about crowd noise and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't mind my child crying in the background. We got dogs barking. We got kids crying. It's uh, it's that kind of night. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, no, I was just on uh, WWL uh, New Orleans, the flagship radio for the Saints uh, this past week. And that's one of the things I asked them about was the crowd noise situation. And what they pretty much told me is they were in there in the stadium for the stadium practice. And they said that, have you ever heard a uh, white noise from a baby monitor yep. or a vacuum cleaner? Yep. They're like, they pretty much could take a nap in there. So um, I don't think crowd noise, 70 decibels, whether it's going to echo off the wall, I don't think it's going to be an issue at all this week. Um, yeah, I think it's got to be quieter than it normally is. I mean, I know that Kansas City and Seattle can get over 125 decibels in the stadium. So, I mean, this is going to be markedly, you know, much less. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the way they're saying it, um, it's not going to make a difference to the game at all whatsoever. Right. Um, it's good news for for the Buccaneers because they're going to be able to hear the calls on the line. Uh, especially with a rookie right tackle, to be able to yeah. hear everything. Um, we might be able to hear a lot more than uh, what uh, Fox wants us to. And <laughs> that on the field, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting, man. And I, I just got to say, I watched most of the show. I've been in and out doing other things. Obviously, you know, my kids are still awake, but uh, we're watching the football game and everything like that. But um, yeah, the show looks great. I love the uh, I love the background there. Yeah, I love the. Pretty fun. and the horn yeah it's, uh, it's, uh it look, looks great man i'm excited to get this thing up and running for you uh full speed full steam ahead on uh on sunday, sunday night sunday night yeah, yeah i'm, right ex- I'm excited morning. about it i'm excited about it this game is uh I, I tell you you ought to hang people ought to be hanging out and uh here live from the cheap seats because this game is getting kind of boring the game that's on right now yeah it's, uh, yeah, it's gonna kind of over and i mean so much for uh, offense, you know, is going to be a little sluggish this uh, to start the season, huh? Yeah, hey, Joshua, what do you think is going on with with Mike Evans? Um, I happen to have a source that said he's got some uh, scar tissue that he's still trying to heal from in that hamstring. Um, so that's what it is: it's some scar tissue in the hamstring. How bad is it uh, affecting him? Do you think it's going to? I mean, this is a chronic issue for for Mike Evans going back to last season, the preseason. Uh, He's been plagued by this hamstring uh, for a while now. He had hamstrings, Um, uh, hamstring issues going all the way back to 2015. Exactly. So this is something that's obviously still there. They're still not fully healed if there's some scar tissue there that keeps recurring when when he's going hard on it. Um, I would much rather him sit out this game if he doesn't feel like he's ready to go, right. take the time he needs. Hi, baby. Take the time he needs. Sorry about that. Uh, to get healthy and get right because it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And I would rather take an L this game. I don't want to, but I'd rather take an L this game without him yeah. and have him ready for the long stretch. Yeah. Um, this is one you, This is one game and people need to recognize win or lose. Either way, it's one game. Exactly. And it's the first week of the season. Uh, that's something Bruce Arian says. You know, we're not going to the Super Bowl based off the results on week one. Right. You don't win the um, Super Bowl in one week, in, in week one. That's right. Exactly. So uh, the way I look at it, if he's a game time decision, if he doesn't practice tomorrow, I know he was out there a little bit with the trainer working. Um, if he does not practice tomorrow, that's when we'll really kind of know what the deal is and if he's going to be, um, be able to really be out there tomorrow, if it's in a limited capacity. But – if not, take the week, man. Take yeah. the week. Take yeah, week is it – uh, and I don't think this is the week that receivers are the most important thing anyway. I think uh, I think your running backs and tight ends are going to be a bigger deal this week. 
especially against those linebackers, right. which is um, I had Ross Jackson of the uh, Locked On Saints podcast on my show last night. And he said linebackers and interior offensive line are their two weaknesses. Just so happens we've got good guys up front and Vita Vey, Sue, and Golston mm-hmm. with those free ranging linebackers and David and, and White uh, to attack that interior line. And then um, we've got some great weapons coming out. Three tight ends that you can run right through those linebackers, and, and obviously three running backs that you can run through them too. So, yeah, um, it, it's still it still creates a predicament. Maybe you see Godwin covered, but that opens up everything else underneath um, for all the other guys. So, yeah, uh, they're missing Marcus Davenport, who's been out with an elbow. We'll see if he becomes available. And another touchdown, Tyree Kill. This game is over. Um, <laughs> but uh. It's um, it's not the week where you go full bore if you don't have to. I completely agree with that statement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there there's a point of look. I, I I'm more concerned about weeks 15, 16. You know, we it, it, you want the Buccaneers to be full. You know, you you want them to be full strength at that point. Um, the, exactly. The, so don't risk it for week one. I mean, they they are going to be playing the Saints again. Uh, I don't. I think it's week. I, I don't think it's that late in the season. I think it's like mid. I think it's through. week twelve, maybe yeah. right before the bye. Yeah. Um, but yeah, exactly. You're going to be playing them again. There's yeah. plenty of teams that you're going to be able to go against. The schedule does. I don't want to call it soft because it is the NFL. Parity is huge, and you never know what a team's going to do any given week. Right. Um, but you do have some softer teams in between. Uh, make sure you get healthy. If you got to miss Carolina too, miss Carolina too. If you got to miss Denver too, yeah, miss Denver. Too. Come back for the Chargers. How yep. if you got to miss the Chargers? Um, they just lost Derwin James, so that's a huge, you know, huge right. guy that they're losing. Uh, we don't, we we don't need that. The Buccaneers don't need that right. kind of issue to happen with him. He's a pivotal part of this team, and when he's out there, he's going to open up everything else. But don't risk it week one for sure. Um, but right. we'll see tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the test. If he's out there practicing. That means he's got to go ahead. That means he's clear. That means the scar tissue uh, must be healing up, and it, he must be feeling good enough. So, uh, everyone, hold your breath till tomorrow. If you don't <laughs> see it, just yeah, we're going to know more it. tomorrow, aren't we? Uh, of course, they could always yeah, right. say he's a game time decision and see how he feels that day. I, I imagine even if he gets out there, they're going to call it limited participation because they're not just going to yeah. throw him out there. You know, I mean, at most it will Which be is- limited. Which is what my source said. He's a game time decision. Yeah, uh, coming coming straight from the horse's mouth. It's going to be a game yeah. time decision, um, whether he practices or not tomorrow. Right. Uh, tomorrow's just a big step and to see how he's feeling. If he's feeling better, then yeah. you know maybe he'll be out there. But game time decision, no matter what. So if you're if you have money, fantasy made all all the <laughs> um, Stay stay tuned. <laughs> you'll have the news. You'll have the news in the pregame at uh, out at the deck at Isla. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm going to hop off here, Rick. I just want to call in and Thanks. share what I was told um, from the guys over in New Orleans about the crowd noise. Yeah, I appreciate that. Talk a little bit with you because, like I said, I'm excited for your show. Uh, everything looks good. The intro is fire. If you guys didn't watch that intro and you <laughs> tuned in late, make sure you go back to the beginning once this is over and watch the intro. Or just come but, back Sunday. We'll do it again. How about that? Absolutely. Do that too. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. Always, Rick. Talk to you soon, my yep. man. Have a good Rick one. Rick Hughes, the cheap seeds. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, he almost got the plank. I mean, he was he almost was the first one to get the plank. Um, so Al Michaels said that uh, or made it sound as though the um uh, it was produced by the by the broadcasters. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Matt. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure I understand. And uh, thank you very much, Christopher. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate it. It's a, it's a fun little setup. I was, I was debating this is actually temporary. Uh, we are moving to new studios uh, in a month or so, a month or two. And um, I, th- I think, uh, I think the, Right now we have we are put together with basically we are we are put together with masking tape. Uh, well, 
Hold on, we got a call coming in. This is Rick. Who am I speaking with? It's Matt again. Matt, talk to me. Well, I was going to clear up what I wrote. In yeah, the comments. yeah, yeah, yeah. I Explain. At the beginning, they were talking about there. You know, the fan is only like fifteen thousand people in there, and right, they put in a set of dummies, including the Queen of England and Bo Jackson, and <laughs> I forget all the ones that are up there, but they're in this one little section. And when he was talking about that, he said that the crowd noise is going to be piped in. And maybe he was just referring to their broadcast on TV, but he said, we're not going to make it go up and down or anything like that, which is kind of contrary to what Fox was doing in the baseball games. They actually set up some kind of animation where they were doing a, a deal where the crowds were in there, it faults, but they were there. And if the home team started losing, they had it set up in an algorithm that those people would start to go home. <laughs> <It's kind laughs> <of strange. laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. You sell these cardboard stand-ups. They put a stand whole lot of thought into it. So yeah. I don't know if maybe Al Michaels was trying to clarify NBC's position on it or not. Yeah, maybe and they're I, not I, going to make it go up and down. I don't know what the stadium is going to do, but maybe. I, I, right. But yeah, that crowd know. in Kansas City sounds kind of tight, man. They, they're not 50,000 strong, but they sound like there's somebody there. Well, then, and that's, kind of that's I think, what the goal is, just so – we're familiar. You know, when you watch a football game, we're used to a certain experience when you're watching at home. You're Did used you to a certain remember when they tried a test drive where they had no broadcasters? Right. They just played the game. Right. And it was like, what the hell is wrong here? Right. Well, if you watch, uh, I think it's Monday night football. It might be Sunday night. I'm not sure which one it is. But one of them, you can actually go online and choose broadcasters. You can choose. There's an all-female team. There's no broadcaster, and then there's the the regular broadcast team, and you you have those options. Yeah. Wow, that's new to me. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I think but, it's NBC does that. Well, I I don't mind Alan Chris. I, I right. anybody gripes about Chris Chris uh, whatever his last name is Collinsworth. Yeah, but I don't have an issue with him. I've gotten to where it's just somebody on there. I don't know what he's like now, but there were, but years ago, I mean, it was obvious. Listen, I'm, I'm the guy who I like, it always bothers me when people are always complaining about the referees, same people always complaining about the referees every game. Oh, they're, they're, you know, um, it's all rigged. or they're always saying, Oh, the announcers, the announcers hate the Buccaneers or Oh, blah, blah, blah. You hear this all the time. Well, Chris Collinsworth, I think hated the Buccaneers. <laughs> I mean, he, he there were there was a period there where he just refused to say anything positive about the Buccaneers, and it was for years, for years. It got to a point where it was like, come on, I mean, fake it. Well, you have to wonder how many times they actually played where Chris Collinsworth would call the game. We didn't get no prime time. <laughs> well, yeah, no, this was back when th this was back when the Buccaneers were getting prime time games back back when they were good. So. Well, then he didn't know what the hell he was talking about. You must be right if he was dogging them out because they were yeah. one of the best defenses in the league for two or three years. Yeah, but their and, offense was terrible, and he's a wide receiver. So um, maybe, yeah, that's true. you know, I, I but <laughs> you get the feeling there was something more behind the scenes that was going on. I'm not positive, but yeah, he had, he had something going on. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe his agent couldn't get a deal done that he thought was yeah. a and Right. <laughs> you never know. They picked somebody else but, over him for broadcasting the preseason games. It could be anything. Yeah. Well, right now it's just familiarity. You, I, I know yeah. when Vince Scully used to be on. <laughs> I knew that voice, and I same right. thing with uh college games when you had. Oh hell, I can't remember his name, but he always Keith Jackson. <laughs> Keith Jackson, we got a dan, dan, dandy out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nelly. Oh, yeah, that was that was my childhood. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I think he passed away not too long yes. ago. But, yeah, I think he did. And uh, it was kind of sad. Yeah. But that's what I'm talking about. You get used to hearing certain people. It's going to be hard to be watching the, the Bucks this year without Rondé Barber doing the play-by-play -play because it was him and that other guy yeah. for – the last three years, yeah. they were always on the Buccaneers. Game. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Rondé. I thought he was pretty good, and uh, you know, they they he's not even with what 
he's yeah, he's just uh, he's nowhere he's not right doing now. It anymore? No, well, they, he he got cut. <laughs> really? Yeah. He was pretty smart, man. I, I mean, he wasn't like Tony Robo Romo, where he's calling out the play. That guy's amazing. Yeah. Tony Romo is amazing. People hate him, and Me. I've got to say, <laughs> well, uh, as a as an announcer, that guy's yeah. brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how he wasn't that. a better quarterback. I mean, he was fine, I guess, as a quarterback. He was okay, uh, but uh, I, I think he just got used up by Dallas. I think Dallas has put a, had a business model where they were going to put him better than mediocre team on the field and people are going to watch because it's America's team. And then they had this alignment with the NFL was always on prime yeah. time, win, lose, or draw. Yeah. So Jerry Jones didn't have any reason to make them Super Bowl champions. He just wanted to have them <laughs> up there where they were nine and seven every year, yeah. which I guess they accomplished that. But Well, he has. He holds like every Dallas Cowboys passing record. I mean, it's amazing. Did you see? Th- yes. Did you see Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to pass, uh, is likely to pass um, Troy Aikman this year in passing yards, career passing really? yards? Wow, that's hard to believe. Yeah. That, that is really hard to believe. Yeah. I can't, I can't see that happening. It's that's Emmett. I, I, that, it was a running game then, man. Emmett, Emmett did a lot of the, did a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. And he went through holes that were like double wide garages that I was watching them on a a special the other day. They were doing a 60 year anniversary on NFL Mm -hmm. and and you're watching the Emmett Smith story on a football life and the holes that he had to run through. He didn't even have to make a cut. There were, they were moving the guards were pushing people out all the way to the end. Yeah. And and it was crazy. And I'm so old. I remember him running in college clearly. Yeah. Well, that wasn't, we're about the same age then because yeah. <laughs> Eric Red b- blew him up though. He took his records away. Yep. Eric Red. Yep. Which is kind of amazing in itself. Yeah. But I just want to let you know your intro on this thing. Yeah. Whoever did that graphic for you, you need to pay those people. That, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> they did. They got maybe, paid. They got paid. Maybe get Peter to go call him up and have a little bit of revamp done. He's got one coming. He has one coming. Does it, well, yours is sharp. Well, and, thank uh, you. I appreciate that. I, I wanted, so far, I've watched the whole program. You've got good clarity. You're not freezing up in the middle of a sentence. Yeah, good. You're having the dual screen was doing real well. Good. And it sounded like Ben was in there with, with uh, Ray without any kind of hiccups that I saw. Okay, so, good. You could hear all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. My call to you was a little bit down to you. I fixed that. Screen. Yeah, that's yeah. that's again. That's the dials and the thing of a jigs and this whole thing. I like this is what I was saying when he called up. This whole thing is basically put together right now with right. toothpicks and duct tape and <laughs> eyelash glue. I mean, you, you would oh. you would you would be amazed at at what I've got going here right now uh, until I move into the new studios. This is uh, it, it's kind of it's a, it's funny. It's a challenge, but it's it's a good time. <laughs> you got it working out pretty good, at least comparable to anything your computer does or Blake. I mean, I, I don't see any production quality. There's no big off, drop. So. Good. That's and that's. Thank you. That's what I want to hear. You know what you get for that? What do I get? You get if I can. I should have had this pulled up. You get. You know what that sound is, right? I didn't hear it. You couldn't hear that. No, sir. It was just there. Okay. Well, maybe uh, I'll have to work on that. I'll have to see. Hopefully it came through. Um, but it's the trumpet blast at the beginning of the old Bucks theme, the old Bucks fight song, Hey, Hey, Tampa Bay. Hey, Hey, Tampa Bay. I used to be in a, uh, when the Bucks first came out in the early 70s or mid 70s when they first started, they used to have a band. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. that. Which were in, the, in the cheap seats. Yep. My mom's partner at, in, uh, she was a detective in Hillsborough County. Her partner's daughter was part of that band. Oh, wow. And I used to get the, we got to go to a couple of practices with them and that kind of thing. But it, it was pretty cool. They had the brass section or whatever. And I think she played a trumpet or what, I can't recall exactly. But it gave us an opportunity to go in there and watch them play and be part of the team, kind of hands-on, which was really nifty. 
for some reason, they got rid of that, and I don't know why. Well, <laughs> it's because you want to sell the seats. That's why. Um, you know, you don't want a band out there anymore. You want to sell the seats. Yeah. Was it 100 people, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 they seats. usually had enough. 100 seats had- at, uh, at, you know, how much, are, how much are tickets these days, especially where they were sitting? Hell, I don't know. I I know when I used to go, when I was living in Tampa before I moved, the Bucks were not dungy yet. So I was able to watch almost every team in the NFL that was in town for between five and ten dollars a a seat every every week. Yeah, it's like fifty bucks. And I didn't. Yeah, just somebody outside. I got two and throw a twenty dollar bill at them, and people were like, "Oh my god, that's great!" Yeah, (laughs) I remember those days. I remember those days. I but I got to see uh, Brett Favre, Reg, Reggie White. I got oh, to see yeah. Dallas come through town. I got to see the Chicago games every year. Joe Montana. And, uh, I saw Joe Montana in, in, in the uh, in the big sombrero. I saw I – Right. Yeah, those were those were good days. Those were – yeah, I remember I remember watching Kevin House run down the sidelines, Mark Cotney pick off passes. I remember those days. And Brantley coming in and knocking a living snot out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, and Harvey, I remember uh, – Oh, what was his name? No, Hardy Nickerson. Oh, he yeah. was my man. Yeah, that, that guy. That, could, that, that was not even play. that. That wasn't that long ago. He wasn't like he's. What's between old school and current? I don't know. Whatever you call that. He was right before the uh, like the Super Bowl team. Yeah, he he was leaving as they were getting better, which was sad. But that guy was all over the field. That was that. He was incredible to watch. Well, I and think he changed the, I, the culture. I think he is part of the reason that they won a Super Bowl. He very well may be because he was a non, he yeah. was a no nonsense kind of guy. I think he he uh, got replaced by Derek Brooks, and I think there was an overlap there where he, yeah he had to tutor Derek yeah. Brooks a little bit and get him on the right track. Yeah, because I think yeah. Sam Weiss was the coach, yeah. the last one I saw play. Oh, okay. so yeah. That, he he managed to get all Allstott in there, I believe, and I think he drafted uh, yeah, he, Warren Sapp. Yeah, he started this whole thing. Again, yeah, he that's did. another guy who passed away recently. Yeah, that was that one. That one kind of affected me a little bit. I felt yeah. bad for that. Yeah, because he was a a coach in Cincinnati when I was living in Kentucky at high school. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was going in a, a Bengals head coach. You were and in, you were in, you went to school in Kentucky for uh, yeah my high school years I was in Lexington Kentucky so I used to go to double headers up there Riverfront Stadium and uh, baseball season you know, I got did you know I got to bat boy for the Cincinnati Reds really back in the back in the big red machine days I was bat, I got to bat boy for the Cincinnati Reds I got pictures of me with Pete Rose Johnny Bench I got a great story for you let me tell you this story real quick you'll probably hear it again someday. I love this story. I was bat boy for the Cincinnati Reds during a spring training game. Now I was scared to death, right? I'm I'm a I'm a little kid quaking in my boots, right? I'm 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 there. There they somebody tells me, do not get in the way. You go get that bat out of the way, but you do not get in the way of a play. Now I'm this little kid. All I'm thinking is, oh my God, there's a man on third base. So, you know, I'm scared to death that I'm going to, you know, either not get the bat out of the way or I'm going to be in the way. How do I deal with this? I'm not saying anything to anybody, but I'm squatting on the edge of the dugout, getting ready to run out. Right. And I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And this big arm comes around my shoulder and he kneels down next to me. And he's, he, he says, all right, now I don't, I, I can't even tell you who the players were. To be honest with you, I don't even remember who it was, but it, it was Pete Rose who knelt down next to me and said to me something along the lines of, we have George Foster on third base, Joe Morgan's on, on first. There's one out. What do we do? And he started talking baseball with me. And uh-huh. I mean, just immediately made me, you know, I calmed down. I wasn't scared. He, he probably saw that in me and took a moment out of his day to, uh, you know, to, to, to step out of just being a big, Big Pete Rose, Charlie Hustle ball player, and took a minute out of his day to to notice and take care of this little kid that he had no reason to to really care about at all. And uh, that's amazing. Yeah, I've got nothing I, I, nothing but good things to say about that man. 
I remember when they used to, when the big red machine was, I think they were doing spring training in plant city. And, um, my dad was with the Tampa Tribune. We got to see a couple of their games. Um, he'd get tickets every year. We just drive out there back in the day when you could just go show up basically yep. on a spring training. Game. Yep. And, uh, what I found was that Pete Rose was the hardest person to get an autograph from. Now, Johnny Bench would do it all day, but Pete Rose was kind of a snot. And, and, <laughs> and all I can tell you is I experienced that day the exact opposite. Well, that's good because yeah. I was – Pete Rose was a – that whole team, Concepcion and, yeah. and Foster and Foreman and all those guys, that was the team I grew up with, and that's how I learned – baseball yeah same with and me man same with me when i when i got up to uh kentucky tom siever just died a couple of weeks ago yes he did. i saw him play one afternoon i uh, skipped school to go up there and buddy of mine we both went and that was back when you paid one ticket went in and they did like an intermission you didn't have to go out and come back and buy another ticket you just right. stayed there yep and those days are gone, and it's a shame because that was when Harry Carey was doing afternoon Cubs games every day after yep. school. You'd always catch the Cubs on while you're doing your homework. It was that kind of thing that attracted me to baseball because yeah. I could catch it in the afternoon and wow. and still go out and do stuff at night. And they don't do it anymore. Yeah, and I think that hurt the game. No, to I me. agree. I agree. But you know, they're they're not hurting for money. They they know what they're doing. Hey, listen, yeah. I better get going. Let's let's get back on football. I got some comments here. I want to talk. To, I want to talk to some people about. So, thanks for calling back, man. Right. Anytime, brother. Do it again. Do All it again. Right. All right. You have a good night. Thanks, Christopher. Uh, I'm seeing here. Let's see your comment here. Watson can't win by himself. Yeah, that's going to be a problem this year, isn't it? Because it it it's pretty much that's what he's left with <laughs> is trying to win by himself. Um, uh, he says that he wants to retire a Texan. You got to have a, a real passion for a team to do that, uh, especially when you see what's been happening there. I, I which I can't explain. Um, I wonder if if Bill O'Brien now is going, hey, you know, maybe if we had a receiver, <laughs> it's sort of like uh, Gruden when Gruden got rid of Khalil Mack and then said pass rushers are hard to find. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's, isn't that what you just did to yourself? Listen, we're going to take a break here. Let's break for some commercials and uh, let's here. Let's have a word from our sponsors. And I'm going to take a break here and uh, have a little glass of water. And I will see you shortly. Could be us, but you haven't called. Call 1 833 77 Solar right now and join the 320 Solar Happy Customers Club for zero dollars down and no payments until 2022. We'll put the power back in your hands. 320 Solar, power up. 
All right, welcome back to Live from the Cheap Seats, powered up by 320 Solar. Uh, I don't know if you heard that. That's pretty amazing. You can, uh, with zero out of pocket and no payments until 2022, you can go solar. Uh, you, <laughs> say goodbye to your electric bill, and it won't cost you anything until 2022, zero out of pocket. So thank you to the fine, fine folks at 320 Solar uh, for for helping us bring this to you. Uh, I'm excited about this Sunday night, guys, is the first actual real uh, real live from the cheap seats. You're sort of getting a, a technical test run here where we're uh, making sure all the bells and whistles are working, all the all the thingamajigs are thingamajigging and knobs are turned and toggles are toggled. And more than anything, we're seeing that the host knows what buttons to press and when to press them. So... That's what's going on tonight, and I appreciate you joining me. And and, and uh, unfortunately, the game not very exciting tonight. But uh, Sunday is the day. Sunday is the day. Toe meets leather. I cannot wait to hear Gene Mean Gene Deckerhoff. Uh, one more year, giving it uh, giving it a go here with the Buccaneers. Love that voice. Love that voice. Uh, I, I don't know that there's that there's any better in this business, in the business. So um, I'm pretty happy. We've, we've, we've had a nice little test run here. Um, if anybody wants to call, let's give it a call. Otherwise I'm going to, I'm going to call it a night in a few minutes, but uh, we had a nice little test run here and listen, guys, this is, this is it. This is it. Sunday. Sunday is the day. I mean, I am i can't tell you how – Tom Brady is the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rob Gronkowski is the starting tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The defense looks awesome. There's so many things to be excited about, guys. Be ready. This team, this team that you're going to be watching on Sunday, the Buccaneers look like the real deal. They really look like the real deal. And uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, they they look good on paper. They look good on paper, but that's on paper. And uh, let's 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 see what it's like on turf on Sunday with real bullets flying. Drew Brees out there doing his thing. And and you talk about it. You talk about going right into the mouth of of right into the belly of the beast right off the bat. I mean, and, and my my biggest thing that I'm concerned about, and this is what I want you guys to think about and I want you guys to get a hold of. My biggest concern is that this Sunday, if there's a, maybe they, they struggle a little bit on Sunday. The Buccaneers struggle a little bit on Sunday. Something happens, whatever. It's not, it's not everything we've all been dreaming about and fantasizing. And it's, it's been that kind of an off season. Everything's been so wonderful. There's really been no adversity. Sunday comes along, it does not go perfectly. Everybody's going to want to jump ship. I can see the flood of fans running to say, oh, my God, biggest mistake ever, signing a 43-year-old quarterback. Everybody freaking out over one game. I can see that happening. Conversely, a win, everybody's going to think we won the Super Bowl. And we And, and it's one week. It's one week. So what what is needed is – understanding it's one week either way that's all it is you don't win the super bowl in week one that's straight out of bruce Arians' mouth and uh i love that actually love that so you guys thank you for joining us uh looks like the bells and whistles and thingamajigs and all that seem to be working we've got it we've got it kind of fine-tuned and uh thank you guys for joining us tonight and uh, I will see you Sunday night after the post game show. Um, post game it sounds like a game show. After the post, uh, after the the post game extravaganza. There you go. That's what I mean. Man, I want to be out at the deck at Isla, uh, the deck bar and grill at Isla to join the the whole Bucks Report crew. And I I have and this is genuine, guys. I'm in Atlanta. This is genuine. I wish I was there. I have heard. Honestly, behind the scenes, everybody talking about how good those wings are and how good the burgers are there. And it's killing me that I can't be there this week. I will make it down there at some point this season. But thank you guys for joining us. 
thanks for uh, for sticking with me through this uh, this little test run. And uh, Sunday, be there, and uh, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Thank you. could be us, but you haven't called. Call 1-833-77-SOLAR right now and join the 320 Solar Happy Customers Club. For $0 down and no payments until 2022, we'll put the power back in your hands. 320 Solar. Power up.